Uh, way back when it started here in July of 1962, the local news was also the national and the international news. It gave Dougal Stevenson his start, and the friendly tones of church organist David England and the smiling charm of Veronica Allen became very much a part of our lives. They had to look down the barrel of monsters like this Marconi. No water cue in those days, but for Don McCutcheon, it didn't matter. He could memorise a whole 20-minute bulletin and then rattle it off without once having to look down. The limited television technology of the times kept the world at arm's length, so locals had a big role in analysing what was happening abroad. A youthful professor, Jim Flynn, became our authority on the war in Vietnam. Well, it's quite clear now that rather than moving precipitously, they may have waited too late and didn't have their contingency plans. Pictures reached Southland in October of 64, but it wasn't until a couple of years later that regional news got an identity of its own. Like the Young back. sophisticates right. like David As Beetson more than £120,000. And DNTV2's investigative reporter, Spencer Jolly, made a huge impact. They were the days of the Save Manapuri campaign, and Bernard Buck began what became many trips into Central to tell us about it. Take that tree behind you. That's something like 27 feet above the level of the lake. One thing that hasn't changed over the years has been our fascination with the weather. Folklore has it that on that very first night, the familiar word southerly was misspelt on a caption. But as you'll see, they soon got it right. Very good evening to you, and as usual, our weather report begins with the 3 o'clock temperatures, 23 degrees in Auckland. In 1970, when the programme was renamed The South Tonight for the first time, this man was undoubtedly its star. The urbane Derek Payne had style. His famous walking the dog sketch seems to have disappeared into oblivion, but there were lots of others. The object of the flapper look was to make the female body look as shapeless as possible. And in this... The genial Jeff Robinson took over as host of a program that asked mind manipulator Yuri Geller one hard question too many. How do you feel about these now? Are you happy? I don't feel about them at all because I don't like this interview. It was very nice talking to you. Thank you. So that's where Paul got the idea. If we needed a clue as to the impact that competition would have on regional television, it came in 1975 when the NZBC was split into two channels. South Pacific Television promised a big regional show, but it never really got going. Television One had seven minutes a night, Monday to Friday, with a bit extra at the weekends. But the arrival of TVNZ in 1980 heralded a major change for regional news. Hi and welcome to the best of 7.30 South. With its standalone 7.30 half hour time slot, the program was immensely popular. But when the time changed in 82, it was back to a name that was already well established. The bright lights of Dunedin-based regional television began to fade last year with a shortened program duration and a new early time slot. Tonight the lights go out completely on an era that spanned 28 years.